welcome to the rock of the nations church sunday service here we are to worship our living god throughout the last week god been good to us protected us kept us safe blessed us with many blessings let's remember his mercies hallelujah every day of our life his mercies were new to us not only that he is worthy of our praises none like him the king of kings and the lord of lord is worthy of our praises so understanding who he is and what he has done for us let's bow our heads and look unto the lord in prayer and let's commit this service in god's hand and let's pray that god may enable us to offer a worship that is pleasing unto him loving heavenly father we come to thy throne of grace thank you for bringing us to a new week oh god we commit this week in your mighty hand as we begin this week we look unto you lord god for your favor upon our lives oh lord god bless us together oh lord jesus let your name alone be in i mean glorified in and through our life oh lord god we commit this morning in your mighty hand amen we look unto you lord for your grace upon our lives so that we may able to offer a worship that is pleasing unto you oh god empower us and strengthen us oh lord also cleanse us with your precious blood oh lord jesus yes every iniquity every wrong doing that we have committed against you cleanse us oh lord wash us and cleanse us oh lord so that we may come to thy throne of grace <laughs> hallelujah we may able to enter into your holy of holies and may able to see your face and worship you in truth and spirit along with thousands and thousands of your angels oh god yes <laughs> they are worshiping you amen without ceasing calling to one another holy 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 lord god almighty they are worshiping you oh god but along with them lord we would like to worship you and you are looking down at us you are pleased in our worship oh god so we would like to offer a worship that is true and lord acceptable unto you oh god yes oh lord god hallelujah enable us oh lord prepare us oh god amen so that i mean not only our worship but we ourselves as worshipers may be acceptable to you oh god without uh, i mean a proper i mean place in before you oh god you didn't accept our worship so lord we commit our lives in your mighty hand wash us and cleanse us so that we may offer a worship from our life i mean for your glory and honor oh god we thank you and praise you for all what you have done in our lives sir. let the songs may enable us to hum and enter into that presence oh god come holy spirit fill us with your presence uh, wherever we find ourselves oh lord god we would like to move in the spirit and sing unto you i mean in the spirit of oh god i mean give us new i mean new songs in our mouth oh god so that we may move in the spirit and sing for your god for your glory i mean to lift your name up oh lord god hallelujah let this I amen mean, worship be an acceptable worship for you we also remember all those saints those who are worshiping you across this nation around the country of oh god we remember them i mean as you bless this i mean those services oh lord god bless us also so that together i mean we may i mean bless this nation oh god committing our lives once again and each and every session of this service in your mighty hand hallelujah i mean yes oh lord god those who are singing their voices be a blessing for others oh god the keys and guitar and drums everything be a blessing for others oh. also commit your servant who is going to bring your word to us Bless him also Lord God let that word be a blessing for each and every one of us amen we commit our lives again once again in your presence bless us together everything may bring glory and honor to your name in Jesus precious name we pray amen hallelujah once again welcome you all to this service let's sing together and worship our living god
God, the battle belongs to you. In every fear I, I lay at your feet, and I see through the night, oh. If you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible. and faithful to all of us. He kept us safe and it is amazing to come together in this fashion to worship Him. Lift His holy name. I just want to thank you for joining uh, in this service and I'm going to go right into the Word of God and I'm going to continue the same subject that we've been studying, the reality of heaven. And last two weeks, I covered chapter 9 and 10 of uh, reality of heaven about regarding church and how God sees church, uh, how God uh, planned church, what God expects from church, uh, and how God does things through church. And I just want to refer refresh your memory so that you will understand. Church is the living organism that is an umbilical cord that connects earth and heaven that brings blessings and purpose of God peace and joy all the virtues of heaven into this earth and we are part of it God considered church an important organism and uh, for him in this world but this church looks peculiar unique 
in the sight of God. And uh, today I'm going to cover the uniqueness of church, how it looks and how it, it goes. And we, go, we studied that church decision is very important for God. He never dishonored it because Jesus himself said, I, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. He continued to say, when two or three come together and agree on something and ask in his name to the Father, it shall be given. So importance of church again. And last week we saw in the chapter 10, we saw how God uh, comes into our worship. Every time when you come together in his name, he comes into our uh, meeting or our gathering. So every time you gather, it's important for God. God looks for it. Sometimes, you know, when we are the Tuesday night prayer and as I walk in, there is nobody there. I walk in and open the uh, the, 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 the door, I could feel God is waiting there for me to come. That means uh, he knows that we are coming. So he comes early and he's waiting for you to come in and, and uh, you know, come and praise him and worship him. Uh, I just uh, found a, uh, a quote that I read, uh, uh, la, you know, uh, last week. Matthew Henry's quote, it's, it's very good and very uh, apt for this message. He wrote like this, Christ died, he left a will which he gave his soul to the Father, his body to Joseph of Arimathea, his clothes to the soldiers, and his mother to John. But to his disciple, he left no silver, no gold, but something far better. He said, I leave my peace with you. And he said, I will give you my authority. I will give you the authority or privilege to act on behalf of me in the earth. And more than that, he said, I will give you my spirit. Think about it. That was the will of God. The last will he wrote. He said, I commit my soul to the Father. And my, my clothes to the soldiers because uh, they took a load and they, they shared it. And then mother to John. But for disciples, he said, follow me. I will, I will give you much greater things than the world can give, which is the peace that the world is looking for and the love that the world is looking for and the authority the world is looking for. And not only that, which all, everything that comes to us through the, His Holy Spirit, the, the, the presence of God to us. I just want to read a scripture, the uniqueness of church. We can see that in first chapter, first Peter chapter two, verse three, four, and five. I will read it for you. Verse three says, "Since you have already tasted the goodness and kindness of Lord, then he says, come unto him, the living stone." which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen, precious in, the, in, in God's sight. Verse 5 says, Come, like living stones, be yourself built a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable and pleasing unto God through Jesus Christ. Here, Peter is writing, you already tasted the goodness of God. Those who are listening to my voice today, you already heard, you already experienced it, you already tasted his goodness, his love, his kindness, his protection, especially in the, in the time of pandemic, especially our church, every member of the church, everyone who associated with the church, who experienced the protection of God. You know, many don't have this protection but we experienced it and to those he writes you know you we know the spiritual house is built on a foundation and the foundation is jesus christ you know you know that who came from india or in other places not like here 
when you build a build a, 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 a building a foundation is the most important part of it you know if the foundation is not good if you build it beautifully it may collapse it may go so here peter peter writes you know we are you know we are building a spiritual house how are we building on a foundation the foundation stone was jesus christ peter writes he he is men tried it they threw it away but god accepted it it was precious in the sight of god so what happened look if you look at a stone from outside it doesn't have any life in it no life stone has no life here for jesus they killed him body has no life then he writes you build your church as a spiritual house upon this rock but this this stone is dead for the world but it is alive because it's called living stones i you know when i went to arizona i saw living stone in a museum I, in a place i went there that you know there there are plants look like stones but it is it is lively when you when you look into that that small plant it look like a stone but it is a plant it has life in it and it is very very good apt uh, you know very good analogy uh, for this situation peter writes jesus is like a living stone the stone for the world it is dead but for the for really it is not dead it is still alive in the spiritual realm then he goes on and say you come into him like what living stones you come into into this house as the living stones what does it mean to you for this world look at the world world has especially the state that we live in and in this country even though it says christian country church has not much value the the world will not give you value for church that's why they said everything is open church only church closes why because for the church for the world church has no no place it is that's why many counties even look at it many counties are against building churches you know one time this county that we are in norwalk and pasadena they were church friendly counties that's why you see you know in norwalk you see a lot of churches because one time they were so love with churches because the, the people who led the county understood or city understood more churches will bring more peace into the city more things into the city blessing into the city now the leadership has changed it's all liberal you know the liberal mind no god nothing bible is out biblical principle is out god's principle is out for for them the the, the church is dead church is dead but peter saw it early he said you come to to jesus as living stones hallelujah yes for the world you are dead you don't see they don't see life in you they don't see a place in this in the city for you they may not see any use for the city they may think that it's a wasted place it's a wasted tax money because they don't collect taxes and because the tax system already grandfathered in you know churches don't pay taxes and so it's not useful for the city that's why if you buy a building and try to convert it they don't want to convert it because their tax revenue is gone not only really that they don't see any any value for church that's why you know uh, it's a dead church it's a dead thing for them but peter says even though you look dead there is tremendous power life in a church hallelujah to me for the christians who are listening to me believers that are listening to me you must understand one thing it is the church that brings life into the place that where you will live in it is you that brings blessing into the place that you live in it is you that it is the channel of blessing for the place that you are in it says then you come together okay the world for the world you may be dead but you come together and you you build it you build a house for it for what i will tell you for what 
God, these this things that look like death, look like waste, look like lifeless, look like no use for it. God says, you look like that, but I consider you royal, royal, holy, priesthood. Hallelujah. You know, what is our job is? Our job is just to praise him, host his presence. That's what we are supposed to do in church. When you call yourself as a part of a church, your primary duty is to worship him, you to host his presence. That's what Peter writes. Peter says, you come to me like living stones to yourself, build a spiritual house. It is our job to build it together. Whoever received Christ, its primary duty is to build a spiritual house. Not sitting alone, not having a fellowship. You know, some people think that you get saved, you have the spiritual, you know, Holy Spirit, you can pray anywhere. No, 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 that's not what God wants. God wanted to build a spiritual house on top of the foundation stone. And like another stone, another stone, you have to build a spiritual house. To for to do to what? Because you are the living stone. And your another job is dedicated means holy priesthood. What the priest does? Priest's job is to minister to God, minister to the Father, minister to the God's presence, receive what God is saying and convey it to or give to the people and that is the job of every believer not only pastors many many people misunderstand that they think that only pastors and prophets and others uh, will get the message no that's not what it is God you want you to be the living stone you know think about it you're building a house one stone is not good it won't fit in what happened the building will not be strong. That's why God wants every member of the church to be a living stone, you know, holy and a royal priesthood. What they need to do? They need to offer up what? A spiritual sacrifice. You know, sometimes we come together and we worship. and But we are least bothered whether God accepted our worship or not. Many times, uh, we say whatever we feel good or the message touches you then we say it was a good message it was a good service or the songs you like some songs and the worship team sing that song you say that the worship is good or some good music musician come and sing and may, we may say that it is good that's not what your job is your job is to offer up an acceptable and pleasing sacrifice unto god hallelujah Church, we need to change our attitude. It's not how do you feel. It's how God feels about your worship. If Whether my worship is accepted by God or not. Whether he took pleasure in my praises. Hallelujah. In order to do that, you have to have this life in you. This life in you. What gives you life? Hallelujah. What gives you life? Why when Jesus left in this earth... Why did he say that, you know, I will go, then I will send you the comforter. Hallelujah. You can see from the creation onwards in the book of Genesis, we could see this. We could see that. You know, in the beginning it says, the spirit of God was hovered over the void and null earth, empty earth. Hallelujah. So need in the creation itself to bring life, Holy Spirit was present, Father was present, and Jesus was present. Hallelujah. Think about it. You're born again with the Spirit of God, with Jesus, and you need this Holy Spirit. Jesus said, don't go anywhere. Stay until you receive power from heaven. Hallelujah. Disciples, think about it. Disciples did not obey that commandment. It was a direct commandment to the disciples to wait and tarry and receive the Holy Spirit from above. You know, they did it. They waited. They waited in the upper room in one accord. Hallelujah. Many times this, this verse also you get confused with it. People get one accord means 
you know the unity that the world expect is everyone agree on one idea hallelujah that's not biblical unity that's called religion religion is everyone likes certain principles they come together it's called religion christianity is not that christianity is you agree with the purpose of god you agree together i agree together the other person agree together then they are one accord hallelujah you agree with me doesn't make it one accord because that is called the unity of the world the unity that bible speaks about is unity with god whatever god's plan you agree with it people join with that purpose then only it is called biblical unity biblical accord hallelujah and they they join together what did they do they all agreed they all said i will obey what jesus said they all went into the upper room and they waited hallelujah they waited they tarried for the power to come think about it think about it if you were there we would say that you know I'll, i'll come in modern age if jesus was in this lived in this era this time we say we will have sunday 10 am to 11 am if holy spirit come i will receive it i have other things to do that's not what they did they waited because they gave importance to the god and they waited until the holy spirit come hallelujah you know why god's spirit is important why jesus said it because it is the holy spirit that gives life to a a dead stone hallelujah you you are dead in in sin and in order to have that that life in you what life god gives is not the life that you barely live hallelujah the life that jesus gives you is life in abundance what does it mean whoever you come in contact with will have life when you have enough when you are overflowing with the life then only the others will have life you have to have something to give that's why jesus said disciples wait you have to have something in your pocket to give don't go out without it church hallelujah i am going to bring this importance of the holy spirit if you don't have holy spirit in you if you are not filled with the holy ghost if you are not hearing the voice of god tarry covid season anyway you are not going anywhere sit down wait in your room until you get the power of god until you touch by the holy spirit until you get something from the lord until you get in an encounter from the lord wait and tarry because you need it when you when you receive this power then only you become a living stone hallelujah praise the lord what does it mean look at the picture of the church it looks dead from outside but every stone that is that is in the church has life think about it think think about it, the building that you staying in now think about it every stone has life think about it it will be an expanding building it will be a moving building it will be a growing building it will be a building that is that speaks to you it will be a building that energizes you it will be a building that gives you the encouragement it will be a building that gives you life that's what jesus is talking about that's what jesus is talking about hallelujah now where days church is a place where people get offended people get hurt people get hurt why because they don't have the life in you when you have life in abundance hallelujah and you are in accord with the one with the god's purpose hallelujah in unity with god what happen is you know that everybody is going towards that purpose then your ideas your plan and your your thoughts and your your decision has no value god's decision is important with in that case that's what he's talking about christ that is the reality of heaven about church when god looks at it he want to see life in every stone that means when you come to the local church from the pastor to the people who comes god expect them to have life if they don't have it church duty to give them life it is our job when when a, when a life come together with another lifeless thing hallelujah life comes into it hallelujah you know in in ministry in 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 gospel in 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 real life it is life on life 
not through cameras, not through YouTube, not through things that can, you know, spread the gospel. But when it comes to a discipleship, it's one on one. Hallelujah. It's one on one. It's one on one. Then only life will be transferred to another one. That's why Jesus eat with them, walked with the disciples, slept with them three and a half years, life on life. Jesus lived with them. That's why you pour out into somebody's life. That's how the, those education system was amazing. That's why the disciples were so powerful. Because life was on them. Jesus was with them. Discipleship is an important thing. Now, church, how do we get it? How do we get it? And who should get life? Joel, the prophet, prophesied about it. And we all know his prophecy. In that, he included, you know, everyone in your household. Including your servant, including your maid servant, and you know, everyone. Children, old, everyone. Think about it. Jesus, you know, Joel, you, you know, you can turn in the book of Joel, chapter 2, uh, verse 28. It says, And it shall come to pass afterwards, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. It doesn't say only certain people. I've seen even unsaved people receiving the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I've seen it. I received the Holy Spirit in filling of the Holy Spirit before baptism. Before baptism. That's John's prophecy. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. What do they prophesy? Think about it. If a person prophesies through the spirit, what do they prophesy? They don't prophesy about their ideas. They don't prophesy about their plan. They don't have no agenda to prophesy. What do they prophesy? They prophesy what heaven says. Hallelujah. That is what prophecy is all about. Prophecy is all about what heaven sees, you see. What heaven talk, you hear it. What heaven conceive, you conceive it. Hallelujah. So that's what prophecy is all about. Because we, we are living in today, we don't know tomorrow, but heaven is all yesterday, he, heaven in heaven, God lives in yesterday, today and tomorrow. So he knows all these seasons, all these seasons, yesterday he knows, today he knows, tomorrow he knows. So what happened? When prophecy come, even though in this earth, we only know partially, we don't, we won't be able to understand everything. We won't be able to prophesy and foresee everything. But whatever God reveals, he enable us to see, we will be able to see it. Hallelujah. That's what it says. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people, all flesh. Your sons and daughters will, will start prophesying. And then, you know, who cares about old men? <laughs> you know, in the COVID season, actually, you know, a lot of older people die. They don't care about the people who die. Even in UK, that's what I heard. My, my friend worked there. He said they didn't even count the people who died with COVID in, in retirement homes. Because they don't count it. Anyway, they're supposed to die. But when God counts it, look at here. It says, it says not only young people. You know, the world is after young people. World is after the beauty. World is after your ability. World is after your strength. World is after your, your qualities. But God is not after them. God knows who he made. He says, and upon your, your old men and young men shall see visions. Visions of what? Vision is all about you taking God's eye, seeing through God's eye what he sees. Hallelujah. You know, what he, sh he shows us, what he sees as he shows us. So that's what it is. You see visions and dreams. Not only that, he did not, he did not stop there. He said, also upon the servants 
and upon the handmaids of in those days i will pour out my spirit why joel prophesied about this outpouring of the holy ghost because church needs it hallelujah now if you go to a church you know say they are christian they are a revival church many of the members are not even filled with the holy ghost they don't even believe in holy spirit they don't even believe in vision they don't believe in healing they don't believe in anything they just know the word they know that that holy spirit is there but it's not for me it's not for me church return to it and let me encourage you you need it without that you have no life you may say that you are saved you can say that all day all year long and all your life you can say that i'm saved but you need it if disciples need it if jesus need it if i need it if others need it you need it too hallelujah you know why you need it without the holy spirit you will not hear the trumpet sound i i i read a, a quote recently it says like that you know elisha has more power dead than living people because his dead bone raised you know the, the dead man when the body touched the elisha's bone the dead man you know was alive resurrected so then elisha's bone has more power than living christians nowadays hallelujah why because we don't consider holy spirit we are not interested in holy spirit we are we, are, we don't care what holy spirit says we don't have time for him we don't have time for him we have schedules we have to fulfill that schedules including me hallelujah and i said last week also i said i i, I don't like the schedules i want to flow. sunday is a worship day we need to worship make sure i don't leave the church until i please my master that should be our schedule there may be people want to leave they can leave why you want to consider church into a time frame people want to come they come and they go whenever they want it but let the people who want really thirst for god let them continue the service that would be my my way of doing it because i want to pray because unless i see god pleases in my worship no believer should leave their worship place because god seen church a unique building a spiritual house and it is not only a spiritual house when the church is a spiritual house with the living stones it is a power house hallelujah it's a power house it's a power house don't expect only miracles in a power house in the acts of apostle you could see ananias and sapphira condemnation of god judgment of god also comes in, into into the power in a power house hallelujah it dangerous hallelujah why people are not considering church because church is not powerful church is not powerful church is not powerful church supposed to be living and powerful hallelujah you know why because lackness of holy spirit in such sensitiveness to the holy spirit they don't care god's agenda because i don't hear that doesn't mean that god has an agenda god has an agenda every meeting he comes he has an agenda we have no idea what god's want because we don't seek him so church has a, a reality in heaven and we must understand that reality hallelujah i hope i will finish this chapter today the church chapter how god sees church it's a it's a living house it's a power house hallelujah it 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 has power i remember think about acts of apostle ananias and sapphira they just lied before the presence of god dead so it's not only a, you know you could see not only a place of miracle it happens when god is there you know you should be very careful why people are not careful in the church why people come to church and criticize why people come and get offended why people come and get hurt because there is no holy spirit people are not filled with the holy ghost people don't care about god's concern god's purposes and god's thing but this is what peter writes as christ is living stone you should be living stone that means when you come in contact with somebody instead of anything else transferring to them 
they should receive a, a, an abundance of life from you encouragement from you not not anything hallelujah that's what jesus want you to have that's why prophet prophesied about it how many of you will well, how many of you will think about it at least dream in your heart at least have a desire in your heart if john's prophecy is true let that happen in my home is not a, talking about church here john prophesying about a family a household like your household and my household how many of you how many of the head of the household will desire that my house my wife will be a, a, a channel of blessing my wife my husband will be how many wives will think my husband will be a, a person with abundance of life my my how many of you will desire my children will have this promise what joel prophesied how many of you will even believe when people come to work in your place hallelujah people come to work in your place they will feel a peace in their house they will feel a, a different they feel joyful in this house hallelujah that's what called living stones a house a spiritual house is made out of you know living stone hallelujah don't misunderstand church is only when you gather together for example in rock of the nation no when you are at home also you are you are a church you know because there is husband there is wife there is children two or three more than that and you become a living powerhouse hallelujah you know desire let your home be filled with god's presence god's praises hallelujah god's god's kingdom god's purposes let it be open for god don't shut it for god let it be used for god let it be a, a, a place for god and god's people hallelujah because this promise is very true how many of you desire that my children i want them to be filled with holy ghost how many of you desire that my husband should be desired in filled with the holy ghost how many of you will desire my wife who should be you know filled with the holy ghost before you desire about them desire about you lord fill me with the holy spirit this is true the word of god is true if it is true father come into me come into me come into me and fill my heart fill me with the holy ghost make me a powerhouse a life house a living stone hallelujah that's what peter is writing about hallelujah these days i i pray that your church our church my church my home your home and your children wherever we gather will be a powerhouse that's my desire that's my heart's cry lord more than anything you know one time we used to cry for a building now i don't care about that i am crying for the power house of god the living house of god like a house with the life hallelujah because you know why that is the most important thing it is not an earthly building church is not an earthly building church is not an organization on a paper church is not an organization with the, with the, with the bylaws and rules church is an organization is an organism that has power and life in the hallelujah that can be a small family can be a powerful church in a city that god placed you hallelujah living souls living souls that's who we are there is another dimension to it you should be dead to this world hallelujah and everything that means your desire is not for this world or the things of this world your desire should be something greater beyond this hallelujah an eternal thing that's what is called stones hallelujah what a beautiful example peter brought brought to us as living stones to think about a building that you sitting in as a stone speaks stones grow stones as life ha uh, that means when you walk into a room the you know the the stones begin to speak to you you know the stones begin to speak in you you know imagine 
Your kids are filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll give you a, a picture for you. Your kids are, your family is filled with the Holy Ghost. You filled with the Holy Ghost. And you become a living powerhouse. And you know what happened? You filled with that Holy Ghost. You know, you come to church. You know what happened? Everyone walking through the sparking Lord. They become, you know, they become, you know, what happened? The power comes from here. Power comes from here. In between, anybody comes in. Hallelujah. They will hear the voice of God. They will experience the love of God. They will experience the, the healing of God. The virtues of God. Think about it. This is how you imagine. The room that you live in. When you walk in, it says, it echoes the sound of heaven. It echoes the praises of heaven. Hallelujah. It, and it has a positive energy. When you walk in, you get to encourage. You get peace in your heart. Hallelujah. That's what the picture of church. Bible explains. That's what God's desire. That's what God's heart. Today, I encourage you to be that church. To be that church that pleases God. To be that church that fulfills the purpose of God. Today, that church that lives and brings life to others. Hallelujah. That's what you and I should be. That is the reality of church. Hallelujah. Don't be... Don't be misled by other things. Church is not when you wanted to call, you know, two, three people come together. Okay, let's make a church. That is not the church. It is, it is originated from heaven, instituted in, in the earth, and operating in the earth until the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Church will be here until the coming of the Lord only. Hallelujah. Then it will be lifted up. Praise the Lord. Church will not be here. That's what the book of Revelation teaches us. So, in order to be lifted up in your life, you don't have life here. How can you fly? He cannot go up. So, receive this life into your dead life, into your dead bodies. Hallelujah. Bring this life. The Holy Spirit comes. It changes you. Hallelujah. That's exactly what happened to me. I was dead. I had no idea, no ability, no talents, nothing. Hallelujah. But the moment the Holy Spirit came, things changed. Become bold. That's why that made me who I am today. It's nothing else. It's not the training that I received. It's not the book that I read. It's nothing else. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that I received from my Father makes who I am and who I will be in the future. I encourage all of you that's listening to my voice, believe in, in the God's promise. Book of Joel says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men and young men shall see visions. Even to the, it is the maidservant and handmaids. He will pour out his spirit. Imagine, you bring somebody to home to work and they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh my God, can you imagine that? That would be amazing. Hallelujah. Just desire something. After COVID, right out of COVID, when you get out, hallelujah. I want to be a powerful. So you receive it today. You pray. I encourage you to sit down and cry until God fills you. It's the most important things that you can do in your life. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I praise you for this moment. Father, I pray for the people who prayed that prayer. That come into me, fill me, make me a living, powerful house. A living stone for the kingdom of God. May I be a worshipper that pleases you. A worshipper that is acceptable to you, O Father. We thank you tonight, this morning, for everything. I expect great things this week. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Quickly, let me give you some announcements. Uh, this month, uh, we have a new charity. 
is for Gilgal Ashwa Sabhavan and uh, most of the inmates, the people who residents of that facility is being tested positive and uh, three of them died and they are in need of help, support. So that's why we, we, are, we, we decided to uh, do the charity for them this month instead of December. So please uh, send your love gift uh, to church uh, account either through cell or you know another form through our app online you know it how to have I don't need to teach you how to give you are givers so thank you for joining uh, that cause
That is the one who we worship. He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and light in the darkness. 
he makes us the living stones yes we were once dead but his spirit by his spirit he makes us the living stones and along and upon that foundational stone he built us to a to a church that is acceptable to god let's commit our lives and look unto the lord in prayer as we finish this service let's pray unto the lord lord i commit my life upon the cornerstone the foundational stone will be your lord along with others let us together be built as your church loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you for this beautiful service that you have given us oh god thank you for speaking to us through your servant lord we commit our lives before that service uh, the message that has come to us oh god thank you for making us the living stones yes once we were dead but by your spirit you have made us the living stones and we thank you and praise you for that oh god lord we pray that help us to continue as the living stones and fulfill the roles that you have given us so that we may together may participate in that great work that you are to doing oh god thank you thank you for selecting and separating us once we were away from you had no relationship but now we are your co-workers partners thank you lord thank you for calling us and making us worthy for that oh god give you all glory and honor to your name oh lord god as we leave from this service lord we pray that let your awesome presence may go with us oh god every day of this week be a blessing for each and every one of us and you may protect us and keep us safe from every evil and let your angels may guard us and keep us safe bless the hands of our work oh god lord let your anointing be upon our lives whatever we do may be blessed oh lord god enable us to be successful in every area of our life because you have anointed us called us and separated us as your children so whatever we shall do i mean we will be successful we know that and we praise you and magnify your name for that oh god let your presence may go with us let that not never i mean depart from us oh god enable us to continue to abide in the spirit and live a closer walk with you oh god give you all glory and honor to your name Thank you for blessing us with all the ministries. Thank you for the word that has come to us. Especially come to your servant in your mighty hand. Bless him and his ministry, his family, oh God. Hallelujah. Give you all glory and honor. Thank you for hearing us and blessing us throughout this day. And this service, oh God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now let us receive the benediction. Love of the Lord. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. and the sweet communion of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen go in peace serve the lord in peace thank you for joining god bless you